everybody, Stan Smith from R Sharp K9, and we're about to show you a training session with the Kane Corso, or if you're from Texas, the Kane Corso. He's about a four month old puppy, so we're gonna be introducing the recall, we're gonna be introducing the stay command, and a place. And we're gonna do some healing, getting him used to being in certain different positions. So a couple things you do wanna have is, I like to use a clicker, especially when I'm first working with the dog. So that is a clear marker that the dog is doing something correct, and then they're going to get that high value reward. I love using real meaty treats. You can smell it when you open the bag. And they're also bite-sized pieces right there. So the dog gets the reward, it has that value, and they can get back to work very quickly. So, come on guys. All right, everybody, so we got King out here. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna allow him to sniff the area. So we're just gonna kind of walk around. So we can get all of the sniffs and the exploring out. So once we start working and training, now he's not gonna have anything that he needs to explore because he's already checked it out. So we got some cats over here. Let him walk over, check out the cats. Ooh. All right, so now he's paying attention to me and now we're gonna start training. So the first thing that we're gonna work on in a training session is I'm gonna work on the recall because that is one of the most important commands that you should have with your dog. And when I tell him, Front. I want him to come, good boy, and sit down right in front of me. And this is a discipline recall. The dog has to come to you and sit in the position to finish this command. So again, we'll do it from the side. Front. Yes. Good. Good boy. And you'll notice he came up with enthusiasm, jumped on me, and came down and sat down, and that's when he's going to get the reward. I love enthusiasm. I love a dog being enthusiastic about doing commands because if they're having this much fun working with you, when they have a choice to go chase a cat or be distracted, they're going to be like, mm, I know he's fun. So again, front, he has to come and sit down. Good boy. And at this age, I'm not really worried about how sharp he's looking as long as he's understanding the position that we are wanting to get him in because we can always sharpen it up as he grows up. But we want him to understand that front, good boy, free. That front means to come and sit in this position. So after we've done that three or four times, then I'm gonna give the dog a little break. I'm gonna let him walk around again, free. Oh, you can't chase the cat. <laughs> and what this does, is you have to allow your dog to be a dog. Everything can't be work, work, you have to do this, listen to me, blah, 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 because now you're not fun. And if they have a choice by doing something that's more fun, like going and chasing that cat, or coming back and sitting and waiting for us to tell them to do something, they're probably gonna go choose that cat if they've never had any ounces of freedom. It's a good boy. It's a good boy. So the next thing I will work on, especially with the bigger dogs, is going to be some movement. So I want him to be able to go in circles. Good boy. And that's where that lure is going to come in handy. And you have to have a treat. You got to chew the treat, bro. You have to have a treat that has some value, some scent. And like we said, we like using these full moon meaty treats over here because we can draw exactly where we want the dog to be because it has that odor. So after I've done a couple of spins with them, good boy. And you notice the click. Every time he does the right thing, that's when he's getting that click. Good boy. All right, a third time. That's a rock, Bubba. Third time's a charm. Yes, sir. And again, this is fun. This is a nice, cool trick, but it's also teaching the dog to use his back end. So he's going to be able to move and be more agile the older he gets, the more comfortable he is moving that back end. We're also going to go to the other direction. So we've done, we've done the spin this way. So now we're going to go, oops, now we're going to do a twist the opposite way. Good boy. Again, twist. Good boy. And one more time. Good boy. Good job, good job, good job, good job. Good job, good job. Yeah. 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 
And you want to have fun in the training session. You want the dog to be energetic. You want the dog to want to interact with you because if you come out and make everything so super formal and it's so boring and it's always correction and dropping an elbow, the dog is not going to want to enjoy working with you. And then you're going to have a problem when that dog runs out that front door and you're like, front here, and he's like, boop, boop, flipping you all kind of birds and calling you all kind of knickknacks. So after we do some movement stuff, again, we're just going to get them in different positions. Oh, oh, drop it. Good boy. Lord. And you'll notice on that down position, he had his butt in the air. So I waited until he put the butt on the ground and he was in the down position that I wanted him to be in before I clicked and rewarded. So again, good boy. Good job. Good boy, free. And I also want to let him know when the down position is over, and that's where I'm going to give that release cue with his free. You ready, bud? Nope. Good boy. Yes, I'm a good boy. Yes, I'm a good boy. You go roll your bellies. You want a belly roll? Yes, 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 yes. Go water belly. You go water belly. Yeah. Again, whenever you are interacting with these dogs, especially puppies, man, you have to let them know that you appreciate them even wanting to work with you. So as long as he's paying attention to me, we're going to keep going. We're going to keep adding stuff. So one more time. Good boys. Good boy, yeah. Yeah, that's a good position, ain't it? Free! Yes, I am. That's it, puppy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good job. Good job. So, believe it or not, you giving your dog these pat pats, boom, boom, this interaction right here, that is a reward for your dog. So, a lot of people often ask, well, do I always have to have a pocket full of treats to get my dog as a reward? And it's like, no, you can use a ball, you can use affection, but I like treats again because if he's a little hungry and he wants to work for it, we can get him to do whatever we want. So, the next thing we're going to work on is some heel positioning. And this is where I want him to be. I want him to be right on my left side when we're stationary. Nope. When we're just standing still, being stationary, I want him to be seated next to me. Free. Good boy. That's a good boy. And I want him to know that he should remain in that position again until he hears that release cue. Yeah, I know, I know. So again, we'll get him in the position. And when he's in that proper position, we click and reward, click and reward, and oh wait, 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 come on, get in that position, wait, and free. That's a good boy, good boy, good job, good job, yes sir, yes sir, that's a good free. So something you want to think about is making sure you're separating all of these commands like they're their own individual class. So the recall command is like math. The heel command is going to be like history. The stay command is going to be like science. <laughs> so the next one, since he is a little tired, now we're going to work on the stay. Because if you're working on the stay command, when you first come out, when he has all those zoomies and that puppy energy, he's probably going to break. So I like to do the recalls, I like to do the heel, the movement stuff while the dog is very energetic because that's what we're wanting from them. We're wanting the speed and intensity in those things. So then after he's gotten a little gassed, there's a dog over there, it's okay. After he's gotten a little gassed, now that would be a good time to start working on sit, stay, free. That stay command. And before I worry about moving away, I want to get time. So again, sit, stay, free, good boy. And I want to work up to a 10 count before I even start worrying about getting away from the dog because can the dog even stay for a certain amount of time? Ready, sit, stay. Free, 
big good boys. Good job. And what I look for in a dog is, is, are those wheels turning? Are they understanding what's expected from you? And he's looking me in my eyes, and you can see he's wanting to move, but he's not. So he's really understanding this. So now I would actually move away from him because he has an idea of what is expected. Sit. Nope. Good boy, stay. When you move away, nope, stay. When you move away, one, two, three, always go back to the dog and free. Good. We want the stay command to mean, hey, you hold that position and I will come back to you. So regardless of what else goes on, stay. He should remain in that position, good boy, free until he hears that release cue. And with the stay command, all we're gonna to continue to do to progress it is get a little longer, a little further away. We're gonna add more distance and more duration. And that's all you gotta do. But the most important thing is always returning back to the dog. Sit. Stay. Always return back to him. Good boy. Free. And give that release cue because these are going to be things that can keep your dog safe. If you put your dog in a down stay and you have to go across the street to talk to your neighbor, we're not wanting our dog to think eventually I go and join daddy. Eventually, mama wants me to come to him because, or to her, sorry, because we want the dog to understand that I told you to stay. If I want you to come to me, I will call you. And this is another puppy thing. He is peeing right now during the middle of the session. But again, he's a puppy and that happens. So you want to think about that state command to be exactly that. Meaning hold that position. I don't like that, that's gross. Hold that position until I come back. So we're going to pause for a second. I'm going to clean this up. We're going to come back. We're going to do some place and we're going to hit the pool of confidence because Corsos need confidence. All puppies need confidence. So you got to stay tuned. All right, we are back. We got that nice and cleaned up. And uh, we're going to come back and do this place command now. So again, when you are getting your dog on these place commands, I like to use an elevated dog bed because it's a clear surface that the dog has to get on. They literally have to climb up on it so when they break it, they understand that plane that is being broken. So come over here in the very beginning. Good boy. Free. I just want him to come on and come off. Get on it. Free. Good. And I want him to start understanding that he has to remain on there until he hears that release cue. So every so often, or each rep, I'll make him stay a little longer. Free. Good boy. Good boy. And if he jumps up there and lays down, that's even better. And like I was just saying, he's a little gassed now, so he's going to be more likely to do the patient stuff that we're asking. When you are working with your dog, it is a lot better to reward success than it is to punish failure. Meaning, I'd rather reward him for doing the right thing than having to correct him for doing the wrong thing. Play. Good boy. And again, we want, yeah. we want all of these things to be fun places. We want them to enjoy working. We want them to not think of these things as punishments. Good boy. Free. We want them to understand exactly what is expected, what we want from them. So when we tell them, place, stay. Let's see something. Stay. Nope. Free. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, he's a baby, oh, that is a baby. And this is what we're looking for. Is he really understanding what is being expected and asked? So what we would do, just like the stay command, we would extend out the place command, making it longer, harder, adding more distractions, bringing dogs out here, and he has to understand that when you say place, He gets on there and he just relaxes. He chills out. This is his area. Nope. And with a puppy, I just did a little bit too long. So what we're going to do is he's going to do the right thing again. Place. 
Good boy. And before he breaks, we're going to give him free. Yes, sir. We're going to give him that release cue. So when you're at home doing this with your dog, you can be sitting on the couch, put him on a leash, have that place next to you. Have some treats on you every so often. Toss him a couple of treats while he's bit in there. Start with a minute. Go up to three minutes. Go up to five minutes. Then get to the point where you're watching a whole television show or you guys are eating dinner and he's on his place bed. And he's going to understand that that is a good <laughs> place to be. <laughs> no pun intended there. You baby. So the last thing we are going to do, Corsos are usually suspicious dogs. They're usually real cautious about things. They take everything very seriously. A lot of puppies do. So one thing that I love to do is I get the pool. Is I get the pool and I fill it with bottles. And you've seen he's a gut bucket, so he's one of these treats this whole time. So I'm gonna toss him in there. Good boy. And he has to nose around in all of these bottles. Good boy. Good job. And this course over here, he's one of the better ones I've ever worked with. He hasn't really been spooked about anything. He's gotten on the eight frames. Again, the full confidence. You can see, he's not even worried about stuff touching his feet. This is a very emotional dog. And these are very important things. Some dogs, good boys, good boys. Some dogs, they won't even get in there for three or four sessions. They'll just put their nose in there and, you know, get out of there. So if you do have a dog like that, start slow. You can't force building confidence, but you can build it slowly. If you get your dog to learn that they can be independent, they can do things on their own, and they don't have to be worried about dying in the world ending, they're going to be better off, man. So we just want to build the confidence with these dogs. Good boy. So they understand that when we ask them things, that they can do them, and there's no reason to be worried about something bad going on. And if something does bad go on, we gotta make sure our dog understands that we have their back. The most important thing that you can do is spend quality time with the dog. <laughs> he picked up the bottle. The most important thing is quality time with your dog. If you are enjoying spending time with your dog, if you are enjoying going out, showing off your dog, all of these things, you're gonna have a better relationship, people. So, it doesn't take a lot. It does take some consistency on your part, and you have to be able to show the dog exactly what you want from them. A lot of times, we don't show our dog what behaviors we want. They figure out a behavior that they think gives them success in situations, which nine times out of 10 is probably not the right thing to be doing, and then we get upset that the dog isn't doing the right thing, and we don't take ownership, and we don't take accountability of we didn't do our part to show the dog how to be successful in our world, people. So, take your time, allow your dog to grow up. If you do have the bigger dogs like this, he's going to be a puppy for a really long time, and we wanna make sure we build confidence, we wanna make sure he understands that we're working together, and as always, just take care of your dog.